Welcome to this webinar on faster Elastina design changes using Oasis Primer's PowerPlace tool. My name is Chris, and I'm an engineer with an Arab specialist technology analysis and research practice. Let's begin with some background. A common but time consuming task for many CAE engineers is to update an Elastina model with new parts or assemblies when designs have changed. This webinar will introduce Oasis Primer's Part Replace tool that can help make this task easier, quicker, and less of a cause of model errors. In this webinar, we hope to explain its features in enough detail so that you can use the tool with confidence in your own work. One thing to note is that all the examples will be presented in an automotive context. The functionalities described are also likely to be relevant to civil, structural, and aerospace applications. There are several situations that an engineer might be faced with which require the updating of an Elastina model. An Oasis Primer provides tools appropriate for each situation. On this slide, I've listed several different examples of model changes we may wish to make and grouped them into three categories in order of increasing complexity. The first category concerns slight changes to part geometry. These may include transformations such as translations, rotations, and reflections, or we may want to make small changes to the mesh in a part, but decide that remeshing the entire part is unnecessary. These may include adding or removing holes or adding swages to a part. Another example might be the offsetting of some shelves after changing panel thickness. For changes like these, we'd recommend exploring some of Oasis Primer's mesh tools. The second category and the focus of this webinar concerns updates to an entire part or a group of parts in the model. These kind of changes might include replacing a part that's been fully remeshed using another piece of software, or we might want to introduce new parts or exchange assemblies. And it's likely in this category that changes would affect connections or multiple includes at the same time. And in this, this second category where the part replace tool or the assembly replace tool is most effective. The third category concerns major rebuilds of includes. And for these kind of changes, we'd rec recommend looking at Oasis Primer's model merge and include replace capabilities. So what is the part replace tool and how can we find it? The tool helps you replace one or more old parts with new ones from another model and assists with tasks associated with this process. This might include updating of section and material definitions, remaking of connections, or ensuring that things like non-structural mass get correctly reattached to your new parts. In terms of where to find it, the part replace tool can be found under the part keyword and having opened the part replace panel, if in the course of your own work, you'd like to look at more details, the link to the part replace section in the manual can be accessed by the question mark. Having discussed a few examples of where the part replace tool might come in useful, let's have a look at what a typical workflow might look like involving the tool. Starting from the left hand side, we may have received some new CAD for a part that already exists in our LS Dyna model. And having assessed the CAD, we, we may have decided that we'll need to remesh the entire part because the changes are so significant. So we'd go and mesh the CAD in another piece of software such as Answer, Medina or Hypermesh and export it in keyword format. We'd then read this keyword file and our existing Elastina model into Primer. And it is at this stage where the part replace tool could be used to update our model. Having updated and checked our model, the rest of the workflow can proceed as normal. So, 
quick look at the agenda for today. We'll begin by looking at replacement of parts, whether that's a single part or multiple parts. We'll then look at some of the options that are available with the part replace option and look at how these can be adapted to our project specific needs. And we'll wrap up the first section with a couple of live demos. The second section concerns the replacement of part assemblies. And again, we'll look at some of the options that come with assembly replace and finish with a live demonstration. Let's begin with a replacement of parts using the part replace tool. If we want to replace a single part, this can be achieved by a simple two step process. Before that though, we'll need to read in two models to the same primer session. Here, we're using model one to represent the target model, i.e. the model with the part we'd like to replace, and model two to represent the source model, which contains the part we'd like to import. Having loaded these two models in, the part replace panel can be opened. The replacement is then achieved by simply selecting the target part, followed by the source part from the object menu. Note that for replacing a single part, there is no need for IDs to match. The element types will need to be the same. You'll notice on the panel on the right hand side of your screen that the Power Place tool comes with numerous options, and we'll spend a bit more time on these later. By default, the Power Place tool leaves the target part ID, section, and material unchanged, and only the nodes and elements are modified. We can visualize what's happening with a simple example. In this case, the target model, model one, comprises three cylinders with part IDs one, two, and three, while our source model is made up of three cubes with part IDs four, five, and six. Let's say we want to remove part one from model one and replace it with part six in model two. After completing the operation by clicking apply, we can see that the geometry of part one has been updated and its position now matches that of part six in model two. Model two, of course, is left unchanged throughout the whole operation. Let's have a look at replacing multiple parts using the part replace tool. The workflow begins in much the same way as replacing a single part by reading in target and source models, followed by opening the part replace panel. Here, we should select replace multiple parts matched by ID rather than replace single target part. To replace multiple parts, the target model is selected and then the parts from the source model, which are to be imported. In this case, the target and source part IDs must be the same. So the primer can collect correctly map parts from source to target models. Note that although the element type of the matching target and source parts must be the same, a mixture of parts of different element types may be replaced in a single operation. We can visualize a multiple part replace operation using a very similar example as previously. Let's begin by selecting our target model, model one. This then followed by picking out part IDs one and two from our source model. Note that in this case, we've taken care to renumber parts from our source model so the part replace tool can correctly map parts onto the target model. After the operation is complete, we can see that parts one and two have been updated, while part three, which is behind part one, has been left unmodified. Let's have a look at this special case where our source part ID is selected but doesn't match any part in the target model. Let's begin in the same way by selecting a target model and then moving on to select our source part IDs. Instead of just selecting parts one and two, which already exist in our target model, we've also selected part four. When we attempt to complete this operation, Primer will offer us a panel, which will ask us what we want to do with part four, which doesn't exist in the target model. 
We can either ignore it, in which case Primal won't create anything, won't create a new part in our target model, or we can create the part in the target model. In this case, we've chosen create part in target model, and that's shown in this figure in the modified model one on the right hand side. We can also have a look at what happens when parts are meshed together or connected via constraints such as nodal rigid bodies. Primal will keep any merged nodes between parts to replace and tries to reattach the new parts using the closest nodes. For this example, in the target model, parts 4, 1 and 2 are merged together, are meshed together, while parts 2 and 3 are connected via an NRV. Similarly, parts 1 and 2 in the source model are also meshed together. When we attempt to complete the part replace operation, Primer will offer us a panel to which allows you to view details of possible merge options and options on how to proceed. We now have the option of reattaching nodes, leaving them unattached for inspection later, or to delete them. And we can also control exactly which nodes are to be merged by applying a merge tolerance or picking nodes to be excluded from the merge. In this case, we've selected the reattach option. It's worth spending some time talking through the various options that come with Primus Power Place tool with that single or multiple power place. First, renumbering options. It may be the case that node and element IDs in your source parts are already in use somewhere in your target model. Primal will default to renumbering the clashing nodes and elements, starting with the highest plus one ID, unless you provide another starting ID. If include label ranges are used, Primal will apply that renumbering process after the part replace function if labels are found to be outside the ranges. Data transfer options next. When replacing a part or multiple parts, we also have to make a decision about how much, if any, of the part data we want to transfer from source to target. The default is that just nodes and elements are replaced, along with any initial stress and strain cards, which refer to elements in the source part. If any of the other options are selected, Primal will import these from the source model and change the target part to reference it. In the case of the material card, the load curves will also be imported. Obsolete data is removed by default. That is, Primal will remove the original sections, materials, etc. from the target model if it's unused by anything else. Various reattach options are available. If remake connections is selected, Primal will remake any connections attached to the target parts once the part replace operation is completed. Any the fail to remake will be displayed on the connection table. A similar option is available for remaking has welds. The null shells on solid part option is only available for single part replace. If active, when replacing a solid part coated with null shells, Primal will delete the old null shells and import those on the source part, if present into the original null shell part in the target model. There are also other various non-structural and structural items that can be retouched, reattached. For these, Oasis Primer will determine the closest new node within a chosen tolerance and use node merge to reattach. For non-structural items, these may include star initial velocity or star database history node cards, and these may be referenced directly or by conventional node set. More on the node set in a few slides. Structural items that may be reattached include nodes attached to a structural element or nodes on a star node or rigid body or boundary SPC. 
Lumped masses can also be reattached, though note that the ones generated via an assigned mass definition are treated slightly differently. More on this later as well. The default is that all of these reattach options are turned on. Returning briefly to connections first, you can set options for remaking connections such as welds and adhesive bolts if the remake connections option that we discussed previously is active. Additionally, you can either activate or deactivate the option to reform the free edge geometry for MIG type spot welds. mentioned assigned mass earlier. If the target parts are used in an assigned mass definition, by default Oasis Primer will warn of this and offer the option to either recalculate, modify or ignore the assigned mass. Alternatively, you can ask it to directly recalculate, edit or ignore the assigned mass without any warning. The include for the masses created on the imported part will by default be that of the assigned mass definition, but you can choose to switch this to be the same include as the nodes of the part. I mentioned earlier that we'd return to sets and how Primer deals with these during the part replace operation. If all the nodes and elements of a target part are in an element set, all the nodes and elements of the new part replacing it will also be placed into that set. Note that this only applies to normal sets. So for nodes, it only applies to star set node list. Any sets which are defined using star set node generate are treated slightly differently. Primer won't attempt to modify the contents of these sets, but it will check the contents before and after the part place operation and report any possible errors to the user. And similar to all the other options we've talked through before, the user can choose to turn these checks or set reform operations on or off. A final note is that Primal will also warn of any empty sets and offer to remove them. Okay, so let's have a look at how we use this tool in practice. In my primer session, I've read in two models. The first is the model I'm working on, and it contains the parts that I'd like to replace. In this example, even though I'm only replacing a couple of parts, I still like to read in the full model, just so I can keep track of all the includes that may have been modified during this process. My second model is my source model. So it contains just the parts that I've updated and remeshed in another piece of software, exported in keyword format and read into Primer. And the idea is that we'd import all of these parts into the model that we're working on. And we'll look at a couple of different ways of achieving this. So let's start with replacing a single part and use this wheel arch panel as an example. So we'll open up a part replace tool select our source, our target part, sorry, hit next and select our source part. And then once we're happy with our selection and all our settings, we'll keep these as default for now. We can click apply. Okay, so a couple of things happened here. The first is we can see that the geometry of the part was updated. So the size of this hole changed and we introduced some ribs. And Primal also remade all the connections around the edge of the part for us. Any that weren't remade properly would have come up in a connection table on your screen. But we've also got this warning message and it's about the assigned mass. Um, this appears because this part has been used in an assigned mass definition, which needs to be updated after the part replace. Primer gives us three ways of addressing this. The first is just to simply recalculate 
the assigned mass definition. The second brings up the panel we can use to edit the assigned mass definition. And the third allows us to ignore this for now and leave this part unmasked. In this case, I'm just going to calculate, recalculate the assigned mass. And we'll get a message telling us when that's been done. And we'll get a few additional details at the bottom. OK, so that was fairly quick and easy. Let's have a look at how we can replace multiple parts at the same time. So for the sake of argument, let's try and replace this purple part here, this blue part, and this second purple part underneath. And if I toggle between the two models, you can see a few of the changes that have been made. So along the edge, we've removed some material, we've introduced some ribs on both the blue part here and also this purple part. OK, so let's update our part replace tool to replace multiple parts matched by ID. In this case, we're selecting a target model rather than a target part. Primal will then bring us to our source model where we select the parts we want to replace. So here we should select the three parts that we've pointed out. And before doing this part replace, I renumbered all of these parts so that they match the corresponding part in the target model. Before I hit apply, I'm just going to tweak one setting. And that's this assign mass option here. Instead of bring up the warning message, because I know I'm going to ask it to recalculate the assigned mass anyway, I'm just going to adjust that option here so that we can skip the warning stage. But I'm going to leave everything else alone and now hit apply. OK, so a few things for us to address. The first is this node merge action panel that comes up. Let's take a closer look at what's happening here using the generate view button. So what's happening here is that these parts were previously connected to the surrounding structure using things like NRBs, for example, between the orange and the purple, or beams between the purple and the blue. And what Prime is doing here is that it's identifying the leg of the NRB or the end of the beam in other cases that used to be connected to the old part. And it's also identified the node on the new part that's the closest to the old node. And it's offering to merge the two for us, which you can see if I turn on the mesh. So all the old nodes have been highlighted in blue all the new ones in green. And you can see in some cases where the mesh has changed quite significantly, there's some distance between them. In other cases where the mesh hasn't changed much, you can see the blue and green coincide. And after Primus presented this to us, it's also given us a few options. We can either leave the blue and green unattached, which is this first option here. We can delete anything that's unattached. So in this case, it would remove the nodes from the NRB if we've chosen to delete these. Or it can reattach, in which case it'll merge all the blue nodes onto the green. With this reattach option, we can also fine tune this process a little. So the default action is for Primer to look at all the possible nodes that could be reattached. But we also have this option to pick nodes to exclude from this merging process. So for example, if I'm not bothered about reattaching the blue to green on this NRB here, I can simply select this group of nodes, click apply. So you can see that Primer has now removed the blue and the green blobs to show us those nodes are no longer involved in the merging process. We also have this input merge tolerance available to us. 
and just a note on this, this zero zero doesn't mean that the nodes have to coincide for Primer to merge them. It just signifies the default behavior and Primer will still merge nodes here, for example, it'll just merge their closest node. However, if we put a non-zero tolerance, Primer won't merge anything that's further than 0.5 apart. So in this case, it's highlighted these nodes as with a red blob because they're too far away from the green. These nodes are still okay because they're fairly close together. If we have a look at the bottom as well, where the purple has been attached to this blue panel via beams, one of these beams is okay, it'll reattach the purple, but the others are a bit far away. Okay, so in this case, let's say we're happy with the default behavior of just using the closest node, I'll change it back to zero. And then if I zoom in, you can see what happens when I click reattach. So you can see these nodes here were reattached to the NRB. And it's also brought up this delete items menu. And if I sketch what, what nodes are candidates for being deleted, you can see a group of four nodes here. And they're the four nodes that we excluded from the merging process earlier. So these nodes are currently just legs of an NRB that aren't attached to anything. So we can delete these as well. Okay. Okay, so now primers continue with the part replace operation. And two things have popped up. The first is it's a message telling us that the assigned mass definition has been correctly updated, which we would expect having selected recalc down here. So we can continue to dismiss that. And secondly, there are now three connections that Primer hasn't been able to remake. We can see the reasons why when I unblank everything in the model. So we pointed out earlier that there'd been some material removed along the edge of the blue and purple parts here and also here. So these connections are now just floating in space and don't help connect anything together. So the simplest thing for us to do here would just be to delete these connections. In this case, because they haven't been remade, there's no FE to delete, so these two options are actually the same. So now we've fixed our connections as well. And we can see how we've now completed this multiple part replace operation. Let's move on to the last section, replacement of part assemblies. Multiple part replace is an effective option when there's good mapping between target parts and the source parts which replace them. By this, we mean that there are the same number of parts and that their geometry is also quite similar. In such a case, the remake of old connections in the target model will hopefully give the correct connectivity for the new parts. However, this isn't always going to be the case. And I've listed two examples here. The first is if new parts are very different shape to the old, so the existing connections cannot be reused. Secondly, if two parts are replacing one and the worlds that join them do not exist in the target model. For these situations, we want a way of removing a set of parts from the target model, along with all their internal connections, and then to import a complete source model, which contains not only the new parts, but also their internal connections. We refer to this process as replacing a part assembly. This is a visual example 
of where assembly replace comes in handy. In the blue model on the left, we are looking to remove the group of three parts at the center of the model, i.e. this is the target assembly. And we're aiming to replace the target assembly with the entire source model in red on the center of your screen. This is made up of four parts. There are two key features to note here. The first is the difference in how the parts are connected internally. The location of the internal connections in the target assembly, which may include spot welds, bolts and adhesive patches, are not appropriate for connecting the parts in the source model together. So we'd want to bring across the connections from the source model. However, we can see that the external connections, that is those between the original target assembly and the rest of the model are in the right place and can be used to connect what remains of the original model to the new source model. And we'd want to avoid redoing these. When we do both these things, that is bring over the internal connections from the source model while keeping all of the external connections in the original model, we end up with the updated model on the right. Note that Primal will also give us options to keep all connections and try to remake them or delete them all. Last couple of things to point out on the slide before we move on. Primal will actually allow you to use any collector to define the target assembly. This might include a part tree assembly or a part set or an include file. However, for the source model, Primal will assume that you wish to import all the parts. So no need to group them in any particular way. In a very similar manner to single or multiple part replace, assembly replace comes with a set of options for data transfer for parts. Two different situations might arise. The first, if a part ID in the source model matches an ID in the target assembly, we can either keep the part data from the target model or import it from the source model. Notice that these options give you the choice of bringing across just some of the part data. For example, you might want to bring across a new section definition because your panel thickness has changed, but not the material because it already exists in your target model and you want to avoid a duplicate material card. However, in the second situation, if no matching part ID is found, Primal will automatically bring everything across from the source model. Another important consideration is how part sets are managed. We may rely on part sets for numerous reasons, such as contacts and initial velocities and so on. We'd want to ensure that all of the additional parts we've introduced via assembly replace are in the relevant part sets. One way of achieving this is to define our part sets using star set part list generate, which is a way of defining a part set by providing a range of part IDs to the set definition. We then have to ensure that all our parts in the source model are numbered correctly, such that they would automatically fall into the part set. It's not the only method though. If we're using a standard set part list, if all the outgoing parts are in a set, then all the incoming parts will be placed into the same set automatically. Let's move on to the final example using assembly replace. So I've read in two models again. The first is the model we've been working on in its unmodified form. And the second is the source model. The difference here with the previous models we've been looking at is the source model now contains 
connections in between the parts. And we can see that these have been defined using primers connection tool. And we've also got some NRBs between the parts. If I toggle between the two models, you can see that we've also taken advantage of assembly replace to introduce some parts along the rail. So we can see an additional reinforcement panel in the purple here. And we've also added some brackets near the front of the rail. Before starting this part replace, we've also defined the group of parts that we want to remove from this target model using a part tree assembly. I can just show you that quickly now. So we've created a part tree assembly and added all of these parts as a way of collecting our parts together. If you're wondering how to define a part tree assembly, you can simply right click on the model that you're working in and create assembly here. Okay, so let's bring everything up again and start with the assembly replace. Okay, so we've got replace part assembly now. And to talk through a couple of the options before we get going. So we're gonna try and bring across the connections from the source model, but we're gonna to try to keep the external connections. So we've selected this middle option. Here we're choosing to take all our section material hourglassing data from the source model. And then a few options down here. So for assign mass, we're telling Primer to remake the assign mass automatically. If Primer needs to delete anything during the part replace, it'll ask us first, rather than just deleting it all in one go. Similarly with the merge options, it'll bring up the node merge panel rather than doing it for us without us having any input. And after it's completed the assembly replace, it'll give us a summary of what's happened. And there is, also an option, there is also an option here to preemptively save the model. But in this case, we're going to leave it as it is. Okay, so we can start by selecting our target model and our group of parts, depending on how we've chosen to group our parts together. In this case, we're using a part tree assembly and this is our assembly to replace. Okay, and as we discussed earlier, Primer will bring in a source model in its entirety. So we only have to point it towards the model ID and then we can click apply once we're happy. So the first step is that Primer has removed all the parts within the assembly and also anything that's internal to that. So anything that connects parts within the assembly and so on. So if we're happy with that, we can delete the selection, click continue. And as before, it's offered us this nodal merge panel. You can take a quick look just to check everything sensible. So these nodes up here look familiar to us. And it's also offered to merge a couple of extra nodes at either end of the rail. So if we're happy with that, we can reattach and merge. It's remade some connections for us. And finally, it's brought up this page showing us a, a summary of what, what parts have been deleted, what we've added in and what we've replaced. So in cases where the IDs have matched. We can take a brief look and click continue once we're happy. And if I unblank everything, you can see that the entire assembly has been replaced with additional parts, updated geometry, and primer connections. So yeah, we can see that the assembly replace function has provided us with a really quick and really robust way of updating groups of parts at the same time and bring across some connections as well. 
a few final remarks on model check-in and management. We've seen how we can use the part replace tool to quickly, easily and robustly update your LS Dyna model. Nevertheless, we'd still recommend thorough check-in of your model afterwards. Suggestions from us include using Oasis Primer's BOM tool to check that the correct properties have been assigned to your parts. You might want to check the contacts for any new penetrations or crossed edges. Is your model connected in the right way? Even if Primer has successfully remade your connections, perhaps your connection settings were not quite correct to begin with. For example, you might find that you need to connect three layers instead of two because you've introduced a new part. Similarly, if you're using a tied contact, do things still tie together in the way that you'd expect? Has any forming data been lost? For example, if an old panel had initial stresses and strains on the elements, but your new panel doesn't, you might find that you need to remap your forming data. Do you need to recalculate any non-structural mass that you've added to your model? This might especially be the case if assigned mass definitions weren't used, so no warnings were given during the part replace operation. Additionally, you might find that built-in checks within Primer, such as element quality or collapse shells, are especially useful after your node merge operations. And you might want to follow up with a visual check for any cracks in your mesh. In terms of model management, a couple of suggestions from us. We'd suggest just writing out the modified include files using the find modified function within Primer. This is also a useful check that any new parts, sections, materials, etc. have gone into the right include. And you might want to make a record of what was changed in the log file so that others who work on the model, who work on the model after you, can follow what's happened. One way of doing this is by using Oasis Primer's analysis tracking tool. If you found this webinar useful, you might be interested in some of our training courses or past webinars, which you can sign up to or access via the links on your screen. You might be interested in keeping up with our latest news and wish to sign up to our monthly newsletter. Here are a couple of other places where you might want to follow Oasis Elastona News, either via our LinkedIn or our YouTube channel. And finally, a few details for Dyna support, which vary depending on your region. Thank you very much.